name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. John gives us just a little bit different view of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Now I want you to remember that that doesn't mean that these accounts conflict with one another. It means that through various writers, God gives us a more complete picture of what took place. If I want to know what's happening between a couple of people, I could ask them, but I'll probably ask people around them as well to try and figure out what's going on. That's what we have in the Gospel accounts. Now, the John account is a little bit shorter, and in the John account, we have a unique place. Jesus has been spending time with his friends from Bethany, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. In John chapter 11, Jesus has gone to raise Lazarus from the dead. Martha has then explained this great confession of Jesus, the Son of God, the Christ who has come to come into the world. And now, at the beginning of chapter 12, we find Mary coming to Jesus, feeling feeling the importance of this particular time and this particular Passover, and anointing his feet with a very expensive ointment, pure nard, worth a lot of money, and wiping his feet with her hair. Jesus says she has done this in preparation for his burial. Why is Jesus talking about his burial already? Well, for the same reason that he's talked about his death, death and resurrection, throughout his three years of ministry, because that was his purpose for coming. That was always where he was headed. That's where he was headed from eternity, before he was ever conceived in the womb of a virgin. That's where he was headed from the moment that he was conceived. That's where he was headed as he grew up through life. He was headed for the cross that you and I might experience new life with him in the forgiveness that he has won for us, that we might rejoice that the grave is no longer, pardon the pun, a dead end, but it is our entryway into the fullness of life as God intended it to be for us. So, we find Jesus on this very last leg of the journey. Having been anointed, the next day, he leaves for Jerusalem. The next day is the day after the Sabbath. And so, not only do the people from Bethany go with him, but the travelers who are coming, the pilgrims who are gathering along, they join in. And then there are the Romans in Jerusalem who have heard of what he has done. And they come out to meet him. And so there's this throng of people coming to meet Jesus because they had heard that he had raised Lazarus from the dead. And that wasn't the only thing that they had heard. They came out exclaiming, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now that's something that would be said of the Messiah. That's a messianic sort of thing. Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. A quote from Psalm 118. A song that would have been sung as the Passover lambs were slain, and now sung by the crowds as the one true Passover lamb rides into the city, that the events may take place so that you and I may be redeemed. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes to rescue and redeem his people from their sin, their bondage. Blessed is he who comes, not because he has been asked to, but because he loves his creation. Blessed is he who comes to those who rebel constantly, and yet are constantly and fervently loved. Blessed is he who comes to do for you and me what we could never do for ourselves. That is to please God. He enters in to Jerusalem. And he enters in knowing full well what will happen. He enters in as a triumphant king. And he knows full well what it will take to be that triumphant king. 
the one who rises from the dead and ascends to his throne in heaven. He enters Jerusalem, prepared to do what it takes to fulfill his name, Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You see, all of this is part of his identity. It's Jesus living out who he is to the core. It's Jesus living out his whole purpose for being among us as one of us. It's Jesus not just being identified by words, but identifying with you and me and taking our place under the wrath of God so that you and I might be sons and daughters of God. So that you and I might be welcomed into God's family, not by anything that we have done, certainly not by our perfect obedience, but because of his perfect obedience for us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, out of love for you and for me. And still he comes. Still he comes to us in simple and humble forms, humble riding on a donkey, then humble now in words, in water and bread and wine. He comes to us in word and sacrament to bless us as the children of God. He comes to us to bring us the blessings of God so that we might be able to live our life in peace each day and that we might be able to live with the absolute certain hope that no matter what we go through, our God is in the midst of it with us and he has won the victory for us before we ever enter into the fray. We trust God that he will indeed provide for his children as he has promised. He is faithful. He is faithful to his promises, for he is God. And if he's not faithful, he can't be God. He is faithful. And we see it on every page of Scripture as he fulfills his promises over and over again. He fulfills his promise to you and to me as he speaks those blessed words of forgiveness. He comes in the name of the Lord as God's ambassador to reconcile us to God by his own body and blood on the tree of the cross. Being reconciled to God that we might live out that reconciliation with one another. He comes in the name of the Lord. And the name of the Lord is placed upon us in the waters of baptism. And we have a new identity. Not only are we sinners, but we are the saints, the children of God, those who are forgiven, those who have hope, those who know that their Heavenly Father provides for them in abundance on a daily basis. Miracles like those that you heard Dick speak about, miracles of people coming to faith, miracles of faith being strengthened, and the miracle of simply calling us into His presence and listening to our prayers. It is amazing, isn't it? There is no reason why God should do any of that, except that he is love, and he loves you and all his creation. So truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and blessed are we who, being united with Christ in his death and resurrection, have a hope that is certain and a future that is filled with bright blessings. Blessed are we as we are restored by the word of God's forgiveness and as we learn more about our Savior and his great love for all people. And blessed are we when we are sent with God's blessing out into a world that is dying without him that needs good news. Blessed are we when we go forth in the name of the Lord, carrying his blessings into the world. You see, it's all about him. We don't really own anything, not even our own life. They are all God's. And he gives them into our hands to manage and to take care of. 
for the good of those around us, for the good of the world, not just for our own good. He gives to us everything that we are and have, that he might be glorified as the Savior, the mighty Redeemer, and as the God of all abundant blessing. You see, Consecrated Stewards is not a campaign telling us that we must be obedient to God. That's not what it's about. It's about our identity, my friend. It's about who we are as the children of God. It's about us living out our calling as children. Frail, with many failures, and yet forgiven. Those who make stupid mistakes on a regular basis, but along with the forgiveness, are taught lessons to make us better, so that we can serve and minister to others who may find themselves in similar situations. It's all about our hands being open to receive the gifts of God. And if our hands are open to receive, they have to remain open, which means those blessings will flow from us. It's not about having to give to God's need. It's about our need to share. Our need to share all of the joy and the peace that has been given to us, all of the blessings that are ours. When we do that, God is indeed glorified, not by our perfect obedience, but by our humble want of faith that trusts in him each day, knowing that what we give away will be more than replaced, knowing that what we hand out will be a blessing to others, whether they say thank you or not. It's a little like our relationship with God, isn't it? He keeps sharing with us even when we forget to thank Him. He keeps providing for us in every time of need, even when we forget to ask Him, and even when we maybe don't appreciate what He is and wish we had something else. His love continues to bless us, doesn't it? as his love continues to bless us. It goes out from us to others. It has to. It's like Jesus. We have to live who we are, who he has made us to be. And we are indeed a blessed people. So blessed is he who comes to you and me in the name of the Lord. And blessed are we as we go forth in his name to bring blessing to others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.